Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Stephen Inks. My name is Stephen. I love talking about my pens and drawing for you guys. And today we're looking at a mm, pen that's maybe a little bit not what we normally see uh, because I really like fountain pens. But um, the other day I was in one of my favorite art supply stores in Santa Cruz, California, and there was a pen on sale that I had seen online and I was always kind of curious about but uh, had never um, wanted to buy it before and then it was on sale. Um, and it is this, Gerbon, uh Rollerball Pen. You can see this is not a fountain pen as we normally look at on this channel. This is a Rollerball pen, um, but it does hold Rollerball, uh, uh, fountain pen inks in the form of international cartridges. So uh, we're gonna play with this and I'm gonna talk about some other stuff and um, I hope you enjoy it. Here's the pen up close. It says um, Urban, H-E-R-B-I-N on the side. I'm assuming that's J Urban, um, which I only know from ink making. I don't know that they even make any other pens um, let me know in the comments if that is not true. Um, and it doesn't say J Urban, so I don't know if there's a different company that's just called Urban, but I don't think so. So I'm gonna make that assumption. It came in a little plastic sleeve. The plastic sleeve said made in Taiwan. So there's that information if you want to know. Um, this is definitely a pocket pen. It's a little short. If I were to hold it like this, this is just a little bit beyond my comfort zone. Um, but it, it will post, so we're gonna look at that in a second. Comparing it to another pocket pen I have that many people may also have my Queco Sport. So looking at that, the Sport is a little bit shorter, um, but yeah, it's a similar size. Uh, and another reason that I want to uh, have this Sport here, I will go into in a second, but let's just take a look at the parts. Okay, we've got a slip and seal mechanism right here. Um, the clip, it appears to be glued on or something. It doesn't move from this spot. Um, seems pretty sturdy, but a little bit flexible. The back end here, uh, this is a pen that you could eyedropper if you're into that. Uh, I'm not, really don't like eyedropper pens very much, but um, it's got a decent amount of threads. Uh, this little ring comes off. I don't know if it would serve any purpose for it to be movable or not, but uh, there you go. And um, the tip of the pen, if you can see right off to the side, right there, there's a little tiny breather hole. So you can fill this with a converter, provided that you have a converter that's small enough to fit inside. This pen looks to me as though it was designed to take uh, short international converters. Um, but if you're a lover of, um, I'm sorry, short international cartridges, but if you're a lover of converters, uh, again, here's another reason why um, I have my Sport out, is that the Caveco Sport Converter will fit if you put it in the back of this pen. So it is possible to have a converter for this pen. I'll just put it on right there. And um, even fully extended, it does close just barely over the back there. So that's good news and I may get a, uh, a sport converter. This one's gonna stay in my Caveco Sport. You really shouldn't um, switch these out and in and out too much. Just wanted to show you that that does work uh, because if you stretch out that plastic, then that converter might not work in the pen it's intended to. So you should have a, a converter for each of your pens um, that you wanna use that converter for. Um, that's just my personal opinion but um, I've had that happen before. So I am actually going to use a cartridge because I have these leftover Caveco Palm Green cartridges. Because um, I got my I got my converter for my Caveco Sport a little bit after I got it and I never ended up using this entire packet that I bought along with the pen. 
I really like this color. Uh, I bought Diamine Sherwood Green because I felt like it was a close enough simile to this color and uh, it works well enough. So we're just gonna do this one with a cartridge. There we go, it goes in right nice and quick. And uh, we'll give this a little bit of time to um, gather uh, the ink up into the tip here. I imagine it'll take a little bit of time before it goes through. Um, the tip is actually made of what looks like there's like a felt tip type of uh, wick inside of the uh, converter, um, the connection to the uh, cartridge there. Um, so it's interesting, it has almost some felt pen like um, qualities. Now short, it is quite difficult to um, to hold, if you, especially if you have larger hands like I do. Um, I'll admit though, sometimes even with my sport, which is of a similar size, I'll just hold it like this and I'll, I'll draw like that. Um, it's probably not good for my fingers to do that, but when I get immersed in something, then I end up you know, overdoing it with that. But uh, posted, you do get a nice length of uh, pen. This is very comfortable and of course, since it's lightweight plastic, um, it doesn't really add to the weight too much. So it's still a nice light little pen. And uh, by the way, this plastic does feel like not brittle, flexible enough to keep it hold together. So I do think this is a pen that will, will survive um, being jostled about a bit. So we are going to check um, how this thing writes and then how it draws. All right, we're back. Not a lit, not much after um, I put this cartridge into the pen, I discovered that it did actually um, soak through that wick and start writing not but a few minutes after I put it in. So that's a good sign, a hopeful sign. And by the way, I think I did say a little while ago that you can eyedropper this pen, but actually you cannot because these are little tiny holes. So apparently Jerobon feels exactly the same way as I do about um, eyedropper pens because you cannot and should not eyedropper this pen or any other pen that you own. Gross. Anyway, um, enough of my political opinions. Uh, let's play around with this pen right here. So it does make some decently fine lines. I'd say it um, compares favorably to my twi uh, my Twisby Eco Extra Fine. And one of the things that I do kind of was surprised by is that it is kind of smooth. You can feel the ball kind of rattling around in there, but um, from a visual standpoint, it is, um, it does co go on really smooth and the lines are pretty even. Uh, it almost does feel like a fountain pen or with that fountain pen ink coming through the back. I have a much better opinion of this roller ball than I do of ballpoint pens. You know, on this channel, I did a review of the Fisher Space Pen and I felt like as much as I love the history of the pen and the idea behind it, it was really hard to get behind how um, much pressure I needed to put on it and how much the ink smudged um, compared to my fountain pen ink. And this is fountain pen ink inside of a pen that looks like a ballpoint pen, but it's a rollerball. So uh, I'm new to this world. You'll have to excuse me. Uh, art advice before we move on to the next thing. My wife's cooking, sorry. Um, here's a question for you guys. And this is a question that helped me a lot in figuring out what I was gonna do with my skills. And the question is what kind of artist do you not want to be? This is a very essential question because there's an infinite number of possibilities 
for what you can do as an artist. You can be a painter. You can be um, a computer-based artist. I'm just sketching off to the side here so that it's not too boring while I'm talking. Um, you can work in digital mediums. You can be a fantasy concept artist. You can be a cartoonist who um, draws, you know, uh, simple things and doesn't really get into detail with stuff, but tries to be funny. Um, you can be someone who does entirely original concepts. You can be someone who does entirely fan art. And uh, this may change throughout your life. This may change as you discover new skills or new things that you're interested in, but it helps to kind of have ways to sort of say no to yourself when you are doing something that is not the kind of artist that you want to be because there can be a temptation to do things even though you don't really like those things because that's what you think other people want to see. Um, for me, myself, I actually discovered as much as I used to do a lot of work with um, watercolors, I still like doing watercolors. I've done watercolors a couple of times on this channel. People have been pretty positive about it. Hey, let me know if you'd like to see me uh, paint more often on this channel because I, I would actually enjoy it. But I made a decision because I'm not very good at colors and choosing colors that I'm not going to be an artist who paints. I'm going to be using pens and pencils. I'm going to be using my fountain pen collection, which is something that I was already passionate about to make the things that I want to make. Um, and making that decision helped me so much in coming up with ideas, making things, um, kind of developing a style that I like, figuring out what artists to follow, um, just by removing some options for myself so that I can move forward. So I hope you're interested in that and I hope you're interested in seeing what it is that I come up with uh, with this pen. If you uh, follow me on Instagram or Facebook under the name Stephen Inks, uh, you already know this drawing because I already spoiled it for you. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a unique one because I just sat down one day and said, I'm going to draw this. I didn't have a plan. I just sat down and sketched it out. It was something I was thinking and feeling about. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit about what it means. Um, I took a break from all my social media except for YouTube uh, because I felt like the YouTube community that I have is a very positive place and uh, the people who are here to look at drawings and talk about stuff are um, enhancing my life and not making it worse. But some of the stuff that's on other social media these days has been really tough for me to deal with, always kind of looking at the way that people communicate online and we've got problems in the world, of course. Um, I know about those problems and I'm staying informed about those problems, but sometimes it helps me not to know what so many people think about those problems and the way that they're dealing with problems makes the problems worse. And uh, for some reason, for a while, I just haven't been able to get away from that on my, um, on my social media, particularly like Facebook, um, but Instagram a little bit as well. So just decided to step away from it and uh, it's been about a week since I did that. And it's a little more calm for me around the house with focusing on stuff that I have to do as opposed to wasting time just kind of browsing around and checking up on people I haven't talked to in years. Um, yeah, so I'll probably come back. I, I do kind of want to stay connected. I stay connected with my family and some of my very close friends on Instagram and, and Facebook, but it was just nice to do something else. So um, yeah, uh, that's what the inspiration behind this drawing was, this kind of idea that um, you know, I used social media as an escape, as something to kind of enjoy at the end of a long day, but I feel like actually I was more trapped in it and that's not good for me. Someone who's got some anxieties, someone who's 
occasionally deals with some depression. So I decided to step away from myself and it, I feel a little bit better. I feel um, actually better connected to my family and to friends because I can reach out to them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and that's making me happy. Um, this pen is kind of making me happy too. I, it does this weird thing where the ball kind of rolls and squeaks a little bit. But besides that, I haven't noticed any difference between that and a fountain pen. It's pretty smooth. Uh, it's pretty nice. And for what it is, especially its pocket size, I think it's pretty fun. So for the price, um, I could say I recommend it. All right. Thanks for listening. Final thoughts, um, I like this pen. Actually, it's uh, more than I thought I would. I really didn't think a rollerball had any place in my heart, but um, it was fun to play around with. I love how small it is um, and how when posted, it is a very comfortable length. Um, the rollerball apparatus itself is not as smooth as a fountain pen, but there are some times where you may want to have a rollerball. This is a good pen where if someone asks you, um, can I borrow a pen and you don't wanna give them a nib that you could bend out of shape, here's a spot. But it also has a lot of the things that I like about fountain pens, including that it is um, refillable. Uh, the Quebeco, um squeeze converter fits right in there. Uh, and um, yeah, it's a, it's a kind of a cute little pen. So um, anyway, that's uh, it for this video. Thank you for watching. I would say like and subscribe, but I'm not gonna put that pressure on you today. So uh, be well and um, thanks for listening. I'll see you soon.